Chapter 7, Learning Objective 3. Explain the purpose of and prepare a bank reconciliation and related adjustments. The involvement of banks as financial intermediaries for deposits and checks provides a safeguard for any cash assets being exchanged. It's typical for there to be temporary differences between the bank statement issued monthly by the bank and the cash balance in the company's general ledger as at the same date. Now, these temporary differences can be due to outstanding checks and deposits recorded by the company, but not yet posted to the bank account, errors in check or deposit amounts in either the company's accounting records or in the bank statement, and items posted to the bank account that have not yet been recorded to the company's cash account in the accounting records. Others might include bank service charges, collections of notes receivable on behalf of the company, and even NSF checks written by others on account with insufficient funds which are now being deducted by the bank. The bank reconciliation process is one method of ensuring internal control over cash because it can explain the differences, called discrepancies or reconciling items, between the cash balance reported in the company's books and the cash balance on the bank statement on a given date. A bank reconciliation proves the accuracy of both the company's cash records and the bank's records and reveals any errors made by either the company or the bank. This process can also help detect theft or manipulation of records. Here's an example of a completed bank reconciliation report for Big Dog Car Works at April 30th, 2023. On the left side, we start with the book balance, which is the balance on the general ledger at April 30th of 21,929. We then include any adjustments for items that are processed through the bank account, but not the books. In this case, there are $6 in bank charges, and an NSF check for $180. This results in an adjusted book balance of $21,743. Then on the right side, we work on the bank balance starting with the amount that appears on the official bank statement at April 30th of $24,023. We then add any outstanding deposits, which happen to be $1,000 in this case, and then look for any potential bank errors. In this case, there's a check for $31, the bank deducted in error, so that amount would be added back to the bank balance. Next, we list any outstanding checks that have been written and sent out by the company, but have not cleared the bank. There are five such outstanding items that total $3,311, which is then deducted from the bank account balance. We would also deduct bank errors that would have the effect of lowering the official bank balance, but there aren't any in this example. We then add up the adjusting items, and the adjusted bank balance is 21743 Now, if you haven't noticed, this is the same amount as our adjusted book balance, and that's exactly what we want. Both of these items must agree to each other. You could also prepare the report with the bank account on the left side and book side on the right. It really doesn't matter. Now we'll go through this on a step-by-step -step basis. Again, the objective is to ensure that every item on the bank statement is accounted for in the cash records of the company's books and every cash item that's recorded in the cash account has also been posted to the bank statement. So step one involves listing the ending cash balance of 21,929 from the accounting records on the book side of the report. Step two involves listing the ending bank balance of $24,023 from the bank statement on the bank side of the report. In step three, we identify any outstanding checks. Now first, we must use the previous month's bank reconciliation report from March 31st and check off any outstanding checks listed in that reconciliation with the checks in the bank statement. Here, we have three outstanding items that were listed on the March 31st bank reconciliation. And after looking through the bank statement, we see that they have cleared the bank and therefore do not need to be included in the April bank reconciliation report. If any of those checks have still not cleared the bank, they would continue to be outstanding and would have to be included on the April bank reconciliation. Then we use the current month's accounting records and check off any checks recorded with the checks listed in the bank statement. We can see that the checks with the red X's have cleared the bank, but these ones here have not and are therefore considered outstanding at the end of April. Then we list the outstanding checks and deduct them from the bank statement side of the reconciliation report as shown here. See that all the outstanding checks add up to $3,311.
Consider that the outstanding checks have already been deducted from the book balance on the left side, but are not yet deducted from the bank balance, which is on the right side. For both sides to balance, they must therefore be deducted from the bank side, as shown here. In step four, we examine the bank statement for any other charges. Included here are an NSF check from a customer, J. Don, for $180, the bank service charges for $6, and some unknown charge for $31. The bank has confirmed that the $31 was another company's check that was deducted from our bank account in error. Since the NSF check for $180 and the bank service charges for $6 are not yet included in the company books, they are deducted from the book side of the bank reconciliation. The deduction of $31 is the bank's error, so it's added back to the bank statement side. This is considered in step 7 of the text. In step 5, using the previous month's bank reconciliation report from March 31st, we check off any outstanding deposits that are listed in the reconciliation report with the deposits that have cleared the bank statement in April. We can see that there were no outstanding deposits from March 31st. They've all cleared the bank in April. Step 6 of the bank reconciliation process involves using the current month's accounting records to check off any deposits recorded with deposits listed in the bank statement. We can see that all of the deposits into the general ledger for April except the last one for $1,000 on April 30th have cleared the bank. That $1,000 deposit is therefore considered to be outstanding at the end of April. Since the outstanding deposit was already included in the book balance, it's now added to the bank statement side of the reconciliation. Step 7 includes adjusting for any bank errors. In this case, we already identified that $31 bank error part of Step 4, and we're including it on the bank reconciliation by adding it back to the bank balance. Step 8 involves confirming our adjusted book and bank balances and ensuring that both sides are equal. Here we see the adjusted balance for both the books and the bank equal each other at $21,743 after totaling up all of the adjustments and adding them to the beginning balance. In step nine, we prepare an adjusting entry to record the missing transactions on the book side of the reconciliation, which include the bank charges and the NSF check. Note, no adjusting entry is made for the reconciling items from the bank statement side. Now this should make intuitive sense since we can't adjust our books for items that should have been adjusted by the bank. Our journal entry includes a debit to accounts receivable for $180 for the NSF check and a debit to bank service charges expense for $6. The debits add up to $186, which is the amount that's credited to the cash account. Once this adjusting entry is posted to the general ledger, the cash account balance is up to date and agrees with the bank reconciliation for $21,929 at the beginning minus $186 in adjustments equals $21,000. $743. The last concept in this learning objective relates to debit and credit card transactions. The debit and credit card companies, usually banks, deposit the cash from debit and credit card sales into the company's account, less a fee, often called a discount fee. And this enhances the company's internal controls over cash. For example, a credit card sale for $1,000, where the company charges a fee of 2%, and the cost of goods sold is $750, results in a journal entry that includes a debit to cash of $980 for the net amount of the sales deposited into the bank account calculated as $1,000 less $20. The $20 credit card fee is debited to a credit card expense account. Sales of $1,000 are recorded with a credit to the sales account. And then we must, of course, include the matching cost of goods sold entry with a $750 debit to cost of goods sold and credit to merchandise inventory.